Well, good morning. God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. If this is your first time here at the Sanctuary of Manor from Heaven Ministries, I want to welcome you in. My name is Overseer Michael Armstrong, and truly you're in the place to be. For where the Spirit of the Lord dwells, there is liberty, and there's liberty in the house of the Lord. Amen. Doesn't matter which way you got here today, you're here now, and that's what's important. You're here now. And while you're entering into the sanctuary, some of you have uh, been here with us before. We give you a few minutes right now. You can start sharing this word and letting people know Manor from Heaven Ministries is getting ready to bring a word that's going to bless your life. And you don't want to miss this word. Amen. So you start sharing this right now. Our family members are entering into the sanctuary, giving shout outs, letting people know where they're coming in from, what continent on the planet they're coming in from, the north, the south, the east, and the west, even right here in America. We thank God for all the people who want to come to fellowship with us here. I don't take it lightly. I know at this time of the day, this hour, you could be doing something different with your time. But you thought not of yourself to come to fellowship with us here. And truly, you're going to receive a breakthrough word. This is the place where the Spirit of the Lord is dwelling. Amen. I don't know what's been going on with you throughout the whole week, but I'm telling you for here, right now, this is the place. And you, just, if you stumble by us by accident, it's not by accident. I believe that the Lord had divinely ordered your steps that you may come to partake of this word here today. Amen. So listen, I don't want to delay anymore. I want to open us up with a word of prayer as people are entering into the sanctuary, sharing this message, letting people know that we're live right now. You can come in and tap in. We thank God for you. Amen. So I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer. We're going to get into the word of God and we're just going to let the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, do what he does in this atmosphere. Amen. Amen. All right. So let me open us up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your divine presence, which is in our midst. Oh, Lord, your word declares when we stand faithfully on your word, firmly on your word, your word declares where two or more are gathered in your name, there you shall be in the midst of them. Father, we know that you're not a man that you should lie, nor the son of man that you need to repent. So we're standing firmly on your word, Lord, that you're going to perfect. You're going to watch over all that concerns us. And we thank you for it right now. Father, I pray that as your children are entering into this sanctuary, Lord, you know what they have a need of. And I pray that through this word today, Lord, that someone's need shall be met. Father, I pray that someone will have a breakthrough. I pray that someone will receive deliverance. I pray that someone will receive salvation. I pray, Father, that as this word word is going forward, someone will have a closer walk with you in the name of Jesus. Father, I just thank you right now for your word because it cannot come back to you void. It must do what it was purposed to do as it's been released from the beginning of time even unto this day. Your word cannot come back to you void. And we thank you for your word, Father, because you sent your word and it healed them. You sent your word and it set the captives free. And it is only your word that we can stand on here today that shall not fail. So I thank you right now, Father, for your word. And I pray, Father, right now that you will allow me to decrease as your spirit will increase, Lord, that you will use me right now for your purpose. Use me for your glory, Father, that as your children have assembled this day, Lord, that they will hear a word from heaven through this vessel. Father, I count it a joy, a privilege, and an honor to be used by you, Father. And I just thank you for it right now, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your children will have a closer walk with you. Father, I pray right now as I decrease, you will increase. Use me now, Father. Not even as I study, Lord, but as your word will give me utterance, that I may speak a word right now that will be a word that your children need to hear. Father, in all these things, I give you praise, I give you honor, and I glorify you because I declare and decree that there is no God greater than you. You're Jehovah God, you are the Lord Almighty, and we lift your name on high. Have your way right now, Father, for your purpose and your glory is my prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen again, amen again, amen again. Hallelujah. Listen, if you're not excited about God right now, we because we are in the gift-giving season, amen? And and listen, I just I just so excited. A lot of people are happy around this time of the year. People are joyous. People are celebrating, you know. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Amen. If you allow me just to give you our opening scripture, uh, the scripture is going to come from John 3.16. I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard Version. If I should change the version of the uh, scripture that I'll be reading from, I will let you know as we go along. This way you'll be able to keep up with us. Amen. So if you're going to be reading John 3.16 from another version, it's going to give us the same meaning that God wants, but but it may sound a little different than the way that I'm going to read it from this version. Amen? Amen. I just want to make sure we're still on one accord and we're doing things decently in order. Amen? Amen. All right. So, uh, John 3.16 from the New American Standard Version, and it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, 
but have eternal life. The word of God is blessed. I believe the children are blessed. So we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to do what he does in this atmosphere. We're just going to minister this word and let God have his way. Amen? Amen. All right, listen, as I was started off telling you that this is the uh, holiday season. This is the gift-giving season. And everybody's excited. Everybody's going out and they're giving gifts. But today I want to speak to you from the theme of uh, the gift from God. You know, when we talk about giving gifts, there was really a gift that was presented, and God is the one who presented the gift. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the gift from God, the gift from God, all right? Now listen, some of you may already know this, and some of you may not, but as of um, the last Sunday in November, which was uh, from the last Sunday in November to December 24th, it's known as the uh, Advent season. And as most people uh have called it, it's also known as the Christmas season. It's the Christmas season. Uh, some of you may know it as the Advent. Some of you may know it as the Christmas. The Advent season is gets its word from the Advent word, uh, originates from the Latin word Adventus, which is A-D-V-E-N-T-U-S, uh, Adventus, which means coming or arrival. Amen? So the Advent season is focused on Preparing for the coming of Jesus Christ. And in all ways that we're looking at from his birth uh, in the past or in the uh, coming of the second coming of Christ in the future of the Messiah. We're still looking uh, uh, back during the time when they were looking for the advent. Uh, they were hoping for the Messiah. They were looking for the birth of a Messiah. Today we are aware that the Messiah had already came and today we're looking for the second advent. We're looking for the second time when the Lord is going to come. Amen? Amen. I just want to help people out here with that, you know. So most people, as I said, they refer to this as the advent season and some people refer to it as the Christmas season. Uh, however it is that you want to review it as, that's what we're talking about here today. We're talking about the gift from God. Now listen. As I said, you know, the Christmas season, and I know some people, I hope I didn't offend you, but I'm just going to say it, you know, because there are some people right now who are offended when you say the Christmas season. They say that Jesus has nothing to do with Christmas. Uh, uh, Christmas is a demonic day, and it, it has its backgrounds, and uh, uh, demonology, and all kind of things that people have to say about Christmas. So I just want to talk a few things about that before I get into the message, um, meaning being that Christmas has been one of the biggest uh, discussions that tend to lead to many arguments and division among Christians. Not so much about uh, of the world, but as Christians, as believers, we find ourselves getting into tiffs. We find ourselves getting into arguments. We find ourselves even going in different directions over the word Christmas. Because some say that they, they these discussions, they they lead to arguments and some have been known to even say break up friendship, break up Christian friendships because you believe in Christmas and I don't believe in Christmas. And it just leads to arguments. You know, I'm not here to persuade your uh, vision or your uh, uh, thinking or your ideology. I'm not here to persuade any of that. OK, uh, uh, I just want to talk to you about the gift from God. But in the form of saying the gift from God, and as I'm talking about this being the Advent season or the Christmas season, I know, and you probably heard it before, where it brings arguments among Christians. And some of them, all the arguments, all start off with some of the same simple questions. You've probably had a few of these questions asked to you, and you probably couldn't answer them. Well, if you allow me just a few, I'm going to, a few minutes, I would like to uh, put these uh, questions out here, and then we're just going to go on and talk about the gift of God, the gift from God. Amen. Listen, some of you probably heard the question. Uh, uh, they start with, well, why do Christians or or should I say, should Christians celebrate Christmas? Why do they celebrate Christmas or should they celebrate Christmas? Uh, uh, isn't that a pagan holiday? They ask, isn't that a pagan holiday? Um, Another question would be, how can you celebrate the birth of Christ when we don't know the month that he was born? Or, or doesn't the Bible warn Christians about worshiping idols? And I say, yes, it does, it does. Uh, uh, well, aren't they worshiping an idol when they worship a tree? You know, these are just some of the few questions that are asked. Maybe you've never been asked these questions, but I get asked as, as a leader or as a, uh, uh, yeah, as a leader in, in the 
house of the Lord, as a, 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 a pastor, as being someone ordained in ministry? Uh, aren't you leading the people astray, uh, overseer, when you talk about Christmas? Uh, 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 you know the Bible says that you shouldn't worship uh, uh, idols, and, and you guys are worshiping trees. You're worshiping a tree. And, and these are just a few questions that believers, as well as non-believers, that they ask at this time of the year. Uh, if those are a few of your questions or a few of your concerns, if you just allow me a few minutes, I will try to answer those as quickly as possible. Possible. So because I would really like to be able to move on and talk to you about the gift from God. Amen. Amen. All right. So listen, here's one of the first questions that asked. Should Christians celebrate Christmas? Should Christians celebrate Christmas? Listen, I'm going to leave it like this. That's a judgment call. That's between you, God and your household. But as for uh, uh, me and my house, we celebrate Christmas. We celebrate Christmas, and I'm going to give you the reason why. Amen. Listen, we acknowledge that, uh, or, or, or we acknowledge that December 25th is not the birth date of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We just want to put that out there and make it plain. We acknowledge that it is not that day. Okay. Uh, um, and you may ask, well, uh, um, if that's if that if that's not the exact day that he was born, then why do you celebrate it on that day? Listen. Any day that you really want to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ, this is just Overseer Armstrong's opinion, so you can take it or leave it. It's not biblical, but I'm going to line it up with the Bible for you. Amen? But I just want to let you know something, because I rarely give you my opinion, but I'm giving you my opinion on this. Any day that you choose to worship Jesus, any day that you set aside and say, I want to celebrate Jesus, I want to celebrate him, that's between you and, and the Lord. You know, every day can be Jesus' birthday if you want it to be. If you feel like celebrating Jesus and say happy birthday every day, Jesus, I don't believe God is going to get mad at you because or God's going to kick you out the kingdom or your path to uh, uh, Christendom is going to be uh, uh, wavered because you said, you know what, tomorrow I just want to celebrate Jesus. If tomorrow's Jesus' birthday or the day after that or yesterday. I don't think God has a problem with you because you want to celebrate. I'm talking about myself now. Listen. Uh, uh, as I said, we know that Jesus was not born on that day. And if we weren't being so critical, all right, if we weren't being so critical, we can acknowledge that the historians or those who work in the record keeping department or the vital statistic departments, those in that day, they did not keep accurate records as to births and deaths. Amen. Uh, 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 so I'm saying that to say this. If you uh, really weren't being so critical and judgmental, you know within yourself you're, you're not a very good record keeper yourself. There are some things that you should be remembering, things that you should have written down, jotted down, but you didn't keep an accurate record of yourself. Amen? So, so I'm looking at that to say if you're aware of that and you're understanding that, then you could not be so critical as to say it had to be December 25th. But if you really want to get an ideal and I'm saying ideal, and I'm going to line it up with the word of God. If you really want to get an ideal, not a date, but an ideal of when Jesus was born, the Bible gives us the best examples or the best, it lays out the best blueprint for us to follow. And that where you will find, my friends, would come in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And it reads, in the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the flocks, staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flocks by night. Listen, the months uh, with the snowfall in that region, in that area of the Middle East, uh, between the snowfall would fall between, in Jerusalem, we're looking at between January, February, and December. January beginning of the year, February the next month, and then you would follow it up at the ending of the year where you would have snow falling in December. So December is the month that would have the most snowfall. So if the Bible tells us that December is that month, if we're looking at the Bible lets us know that when we study that uh, climate and that region of the Middle East, most theologians have suggested that Jesus was born somewhere in the springtime. Uh, the theologies or, or that theory comes from uh, based on the narrative, the biblical narrative that says that the shepherds were watching over their flocks in the fields on the night of Jesus' birth. When we look at that from the biblical scholar's point of view, we have to generally agree that Jesus was not born in the winter. 
uh, there's a strong possibility that there could have been some snow on the ground in the month of December. Uh, uh, snow could have fell anywhere from January to December. Therefore, at that time of the year, the flocks would have not been found in open fields during the night. Moreover, there's a decree. We have to remember what the Bible tells us. That there was a decree. Uh, there was a census being made that calls for everyone who was born uh, uh, under uh, uh, um, uh, under uh, Joseph. Uh, 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 they had to come back. Everyone who was of the tribe of Judah, they had to come back into. There was a census that was being taken, and during that time of the census, Joseph was on his way back to be counted. In the census so traveling would have been a uh, uh, really uh, rigid to travel wherever distance people were coming from you got to remember there were no airplanes so people were either traveling by foot by donkey by horse by camel they were traveling and if they were traveling they would not have had them to come during that time of a census and the harsh weather it wouldn't have been done they would have never ordered it so we're still believing now that it have, if the, in order for the census to be uh, done, it had to been somewhere again in the springtime, not the winter. So we don't know for sure the month, and we don't know for sure the day. But we, I'm talking about me and my house, we celebrate the birth of Jesus because we know that he came. And because we know that he came, he was already born, that completes the first part of the advent. So now we're in celebration looking for the second coming of our Lord and Savior. We're, we're looking for him now and we're going to gear ourselves up for the, for the second advent. Because he came one time, that's a reason enough to celebrate. If he had never came, then we wouldn't even have a reason to have that celebration. Amen? Listen, we got to remember Jesus was here and he's coming back again. And then the other question that people ask is, well, overseer, uh, uh, or they may ask you, uh, isn't Christmas a pagan holiday? Listen, as I said earlier, any day you choose to celebrate Jesus, to worship Jesus, to, to say that uh, 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 this is his day of celebration, and that's his day, only one person gets mad when you celebrate Jesus, only one. And that's the devil. The devil doesn't care. He, the devil would prefer you not to celebrate Jesus at any given time. But the devil is the only one who gets mad when you mention Jesus. The devil is the only one who's mad when you talk about celebrating Jesus. Listen, do you remember uh, in the book of Genesis where uh, Joseph's brothers had sold him into slavery and Joseph had an opportunity to confront his brothers after the fact? And the Bible tells us in Genesis 5.20, Joseph tells his brothers this. He says, uh, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring about this present result, to keep many people alive. Now listen. I'm saying that to say this. You have to tell that devil. Or anyone else who opposes you want to celebrate Jesus. On this day or that day. You have to tell them this. Listen. Uh, uh, for uh, Like Joseph told his brothers. What you meant for evil. God meant it for good. I'm saying that to say this. There's only two times out of a year. Two times. When people uh, really talk about Jesus. They talk about Jesus birth at Christmas. They talk about Jesus' death at Easter. The only two times. So when you talk about Jesus only those two times, you don't have to mention it because you're a believer. Sometimes you're waiting for an opportunity. Hopefully, you should be waiting on opportunities where you can, man, I just wish, Lord, I just wish I could present Jesus. I wish I had an opportunity to talk to somebody about Jesus. But every time I talk to people about Jesus, they don't want to hear it. So now the door has been opened. Why? Because the world wants to talk about the birth of Jesus when? At Christmas. So when the world wants to talk about the birth of Jesus, whether or not you believe he was born on that day, it leaves the door open now for dialogue. It leaves the door open now to witness. It leaves the door open for you to share the good news of the gospel. Hallelujah. So what the devil meant for evil, God uses it now for good. I don't care if it's his birthday. I don't care if it's his death day. When those two days come around, the biggest discussion, and most of them is usually by us Christians, that we shouldn't celebrate this, and we shouldn't call Call it that. It's a it's a pagan holiday. No, what you can call it a pagan holiday, but I'm looking at it to say God used it now to allow us as believers. He, he allows the world to talk about the birth 
of the Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He allows the world to talk about the death of a Savior. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when that door is open, what are you waiting for? Now you have an opportunity to present, to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry about opening the door. The door was already open. Come in. Get yourself comfortable. Get yourself seated, seated now so that you can begin to dialogue, so you can begin to talk about people saying about the birth of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when you want to go talk to people about Jesus, my brother, my sister, have you, do you know Jesus says, oh, here they go with that Jesus stuff. I don't want to hear that stuff. So they be lying and go out another day. But now when here it is, when these times come across, we're talking about the birth of Jesus. When whether it's Christmas day on the 25th or any day, but we're talking about December 25th because that's the day that the world acknowledges the, the uh, birth of Jesus. So even now you with your self-righteous self, you can now have an opportunity to share the gospel, to share the good news. How? Because you know now that yes, Jesus wasn't born on the 25th. So why do you guys celebrate it? We celebrate it because we know that he came. Amen. We're not wait. We're not waiting for his first arrival. We're waiting on the second coming of the Lord. Amen. And guess what? I wasn't here for the first one. But if I was, I would have went and celebrated. But now I'm celebrating because I know that he was here. And guess what? You have an opportunity now to share with those who don't know about. Well, you know, he may not have been born on that day. But what do you know about Jesus? Hallelujah. That's where you get the opportunity. What do you know about Christmas? Well, we know Christmas is the birth of Jesus. Okay. If that's where they are, that's where they are. But what do you know about Jesus? Because they mentioned his name. So then you talk to them about Jesus. You don't have to tell everybody, uh, uh, you know, people will know how, you, how closely you are to Jesus on how you explain who Jesus is to you. You could go beyond the fact that he's my Lord and Savior. You could say, when I was sick, I had nobody else named to call on, but I called on the name of Jesus. And guess what? There are people who are sick today, and they would have never known healing if it wasn't for Jesus. Amen? So this gives you an opportunity to share Jesus with somebody, because they're the one who started the conversation about Jesus. You know, another thing that people always say, well, you know, Overseer Jesus never wanted to be celebrated. You talk about you want to celebrate Jesus. Jesus never wanted to be celebrated. Why do you want to celebrate Jesus? He never made a big fuss about himself having a birthday. He never made a big fuss about him uh, uh, being celebrated and wanted to be celebrated. And I say, well, where did you hear that from? Where in the Bible did you ever hear about Jesus wanting to be celebrated? Where? Where? There's nowhere in the Bible that Jesus wanted to be celebrated. And I say, well, you know, you do error by not knowing the scriptures and the power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What are you talking about over here? Listen, like I said, people always say that Jesus never wanted to be celebrated. But if you read the Bible, and I hope you do. You got Matthew, you got Mark, you got John, and all of us, all, all, Matthew, Mark, and John, all tell a story about the time of Jesus' triumphal entry, and they were all eyewitnesses, meaning that they weren't in the background, but they were eyewitnesses, they first-hand account. And Matthew tells us, uh, uh, they, they started telling us, Matthew goes on and lets us know, he says, you know, the crowds were going ahead of Jesus, and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, the son of David, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they were celebrating Jesus' arrival coming into town on his triumphal entry. And guess what? Do you think Jesus had a problem with that? Only one who has a problem when you go to celebrate Jesus is the devil or those who have the spirit of the devil. What are you saying, overseer? I'm saying this. Do you think Jesus had a problem with them cele uh, celebrating him as he was coming into town? Well, let's see what the word of God says. In Matthew 21, 15, it says that when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he, talking about Jesus, the wonderful things that Jesus had done, and the children who were shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they became ign in, uh, indignant. Listen, my brothers and sisters, that let you know right there. These were the leaders, glory to God, the leaders of the church, the synagogue leaders, the, the ones who were supposed to be looking for Jesus. The ones who were studying the scriptures. Jesus said, you study the scriptures, but they point to me, but you don't know me. 
You don't know me. And here it is now. Jesus is coming down Main Street. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the people are shouting and celebrating. Hosanna, Hosanna uh, to the son of David. The one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And the Bible makes it plain to us. The chief priests and the scribes, they saw this. They heard the children and they came, became indignant. Why would they become indignant? The Bible lets us know that the chief priests and scribes became indignant. But Luke, hallelujah, he was not, he's, a, he's one of the gospel writers, in case you didn't know. Luke was not an eyewitness to this. No, remember, this came from Matthew, Mark, and John. But Luke was, uh, uh, he wasn't an eyewitness, but he wrote on the account of what it was that he heard from the others who were eyewitnesses. And what did Luke write? What did Luke write? Well, I'm glad you asked. You know, the chief priests and the scribes, they became indignant. And Luke, who wasn't present, but through the testimony of others, Luke lets us hear this. Luke 19, 39, and 40. And it reads, And yet some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, talking to Jesus, And yet some of the uh, crowd some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. Jesus replied, I tell you, if these stop speaking, the stones will cry out. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, if you think that that doesn't sound like that Jesus had a problem, if you think that means, oh, Jesus didn't want to be celebrated, absolutely not. Jesus said, if I, he said, I tell you, if these stop speaking, if they stop crying out, the stones are going to cry out. Some version says the rocks are going to cry out. Listen, we sing the song, I don't want no rock crying out for me. Why? Because I'm going to celebrate Jesus. I'm going to lift his name up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, hallelujah, I I'll draw all men unto me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And now Jesus is being lifted up. And the scribes and the Pharisees, the chief of them, hallelujah. Glory to God. The chief priests got indignant because Jesus is being lifted up. And you want to sit here and tell me now, Jesus never wanted to be celebrated. I don't know where in the Bible Jesus uh, 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 got celebrated because you don't understand the scriptures. Jesus was being celebrated in his triumphal entry. And guess what? It doesn't sound like that Jesus had an issue with being celebrated. It doesn't sound like that to me. He knew why the people were celebrating, and he knew who the people were celebrating. Hallelujah. So in case you didn't know, every time you celebrate Jesus, those that don't have the Spirit of God are the ones who are going to get mad because they don't want you to celebrate Jesus. They don't want you to celebrate Jesus. They don't want you to bless his name. They think that, listen, this is what the Word is telling us. So this is why I want to let you know, every time you celebrate Jesus, the only one that gets mad is the devil. He gets mad. If you celebrate Jesus twice a year, if it's his birth or if it's at Christmas time, the only one who gets mad is the devil. Why? Because the devil doesn't want you to celebrate Jesus at all. He doesn't want you to celebrate Jesus. Listen, listen, I know Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, and it doesn't matter to me. I celebrate because I know that he came. I celebrate because I know that he offered salvation. I celebrate because he died in my place. I celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. And with great excitement, I'm looking forward to the second coming. Whether I'm laid out or whether I'm called up, I'm looking forward to the second advent of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, here's the next question. Now let me help you out. Well, well, uh, overseer isn't having a Christmas tree worshiping idols. And I said, and I say, you know, the people who ask that question, some of them don't even know in the Bible. Where do you find that in the Bible? Where do you find that? And if they able to find the scripture, they uh, misinterpret the scripture by not having an understanding of what the scripture is talking about. Where do you find that scripture? Oh, it's in Jeremiah. Okay, well, what was God saying to Jeremiah? Uh, uh, uh. He just said, he just said that you shouldn't have these trees. No, that's, that's your word. What does God say? Listen, as I said, people get upset over these things. You shouldn't have a Christmas tree because the tree represents an idol and you're worshiping your idol. Jeremiah says so. Okay, 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 okay. Let's, let, let's take a look and see what the Lord says. Ask somebody, where in Jeremiah do they find that? They won't know, but I'm going to help you. And if they did know, they, like I said, they, there's a misunderstanding, a misinterpretation of the scripture. All right, listen. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 10, verses 3 through 5, amen, it says, For the customs of the people 
are futile. For it is wood cut from the forest, the work of the hands of a craftsman with a cutting tool. They decorate the idol with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammer so that it will not totter. They are like a scarecrow in a cucumber field. They cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot walk. Do not fear them for they can do you no harm nor can they do any good. That's the scripture that people go to when they talk about having a Christmas tree and worshiping idols. My brothers and sisters, let me help you out. These verses do not apply to what you or I would call a Christmas tree. It doesn't. But these verses, they do condemn ideology. Any form of idolatry, it, con it condemns. Meaning what? Meaning that during the day of Jeremiah, as well as in our day today, people still practice idolatry. And God is against idolatry. You should have no other God except him. Amen? So anything that you're looking to make a God or an idol, then that is what God is talking about. That is what God was speaking to Jeremiah about. Listen, God's chosen people... This is what God was saying to Jeremiah. My people, my chosen people, they're following the customs of the heathen who cut down trees, shaped the wood into idols, and decorated the wood uh, with silver and gold ornaments and worshipped the idol as it was God's. It's a small g for God's. Amen? God tells Jeremiah this, that the people are, are not to fear those idols. Why, God? Why should they not fear these idols? He tells them, he says, listen, because the idols can do you no harm. The idols, he says, they are like a, 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 a worshiping, like a God, a little God. The idols can do you no harm. And as believers, this is what God wants us to know. Listen, we as believers don't worship a Christmas tree. Don't worship a Christmas tree. When we talk about uh, Christmas, or at least when I talk about Christmas, we talk about still allowing Christ to be the center of Christmas, not a tree. Amen? It's not about worshiping a tree. It's about worshiping a Savior. Amen? So what I want you to understand is this. As believers, it's important for us, if we're going to celebrate Christmas, then it's important to keep Christ as the center of our worship and not a tree. We're not worshiping trees. Amen. It's important to keep Christ uh, unhindered in our observance of Christmas. What are you saying? I'm saying that we do not believe, I do not believe it's unbiblical to have a Christmas tree lighted and decorated in your home, in the church, you can have it in the sanctuary of the church. You can have it in the lobby of the church. What do you mean have it in the sanctuary of the church over here? Listen, let me tell you something. I've seen some churches, I've been in churches, you probably have too, where they have beautiful Christmas trees decorated. In the lobby, some may have them up in the, uh, uh, in the sanctuary. And, and to me, and for those who do it, I don't see anything wrong with it. And, and this is, this is you can look and say, well, that's your personal opinion, overseer. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And you rarely get my personal opinion interjected. But let me let you know something about my personal opinion. Amen. If you're in a church and you see that they have the tree and the tree is decorated nice. And if you're in the church and you see that in the sanctuary and the pastor stops the service and says, everyone, look and marvel at the tree. I want all the congregation to come down and just bow down to the tree. I want the congregation to come and worship the tree. Let us praise the tree. If, if you're in a church like that and they stop the service and tell you to come and bow before a tree, to come and tell you to worship the tree, to come and tell you to speak to the tree, to pray uh, to a tree, then you need to leave that place. Don't delay. Leave. 
Because that's the place where they're practicing idolatry. That's the place where God was speaking to Jeremiah about and saying that I do not want my children, you and I, to follow these way of the heathen, to follow these strange customs because they have nothing to do with God. They're a small G, not a capital G. And God doesn't want us to do that. So if you're ever somewhere like that and, and, and people say, oh, come and worship the lights. Look at how beautiful the bulbs are on the Christmas tree. We need to pay homage to the tree. You need to leave that place. Leave without delay and don't come back. Don't come back. Yes, overseer is telling you that. I'm giving you permission to leave. However, I have seen people and I have heard where uh, people you're looking at with the branches of the tree. You know the branches of the tree uh, uh, are always pointing upward. So you could look at it to say, even as the Bible tells us, that the trees shall clap their hands. Well, you could look at it, the branches and say the branches are pointing upward, giving praise to God. The tree is praising God. Branches going upward, praising God. Amen? Listen, you know, on most Christmas trees, they place a star on the top of the tree. You know, and and you could even use it as a represent uh, a representation of saying or a symbolic six, uh, a symbol of saying the star on the top of the tree is symbolic to the star of David. You put it at the highest part of the tree because Jesus is the highest. Amen. And the branches of the tree symbolically are pointing up, giving praise to God. Amen. The star on the top of the tree can be representing the star of Bethlehem. You know, it's also said that when you use these uh, uh, Christmas trees, you notice all the Christmas trees are usually evergreen trees. Another thing that we can look at, or I would look at and say uh, another form of symbolism would be evergreen. Hmm, what about an evergreen? Evergreen could be symbolic for uh, eternal life because it's evergreen. Amen. That's what it's supposed to represent. Eternal life or, or God's gift uh, uh, to us through the Lord Jesus Christ. God gives us this gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. That's what we're talking about, a gift from God, right? You want to see how that lines up? Okay. You know, if some people even talk about it and say, well, overseer, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Christmas songs. The songs don't have nothing to do with Christmas. They don't have nothing to do with Jesus. Okay, when I ask them, the first thing that people want to throw out is the, the songs of Jingle Bells or or, or uh, uh, We Wish You a Merry Christmas. Well, those are songs you want to hold on to, hold on. But what about Silent Night? Oh, Holy Night. What about Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem? What about Go Tell It on the Mountains, Over the Hills and Everywhere, that what? That Jesus Christ was born. You see, you allow the devil to get into your mind, so your, your carnal mind, you yeah, you can sit here and say, well, overseer, you're twisting it. No, I'm bringing you the word of God. Amen. And I want you to see that no matter what the devil used for evil, God is going to use it for good. Because if it's that time of the year where people want to sing uh, Silent Night, Holy Night, or uh, uh, the shepherds in their field, if you want to talk about go tell it over the mountain, over the hills and everywhere that Jesus Christ was born, listen, 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 listen. Oh, little town of Bethlehem. What happened in the little town of Bethlehem? Jesus Christ was born. The devil doesn't want you to speak about Jesus. So he'll tell you don't even mention Christmas. But I can use Christmas and point everywhere in Christmas to Jesus. I can do it. And as you're listening to me, you know it as well too. Listen, listen. If you ask me, and as I, I hope you did, do I celebrate Christmas? Yes, and these are the reasons why. These are the reasons why I celebrate Christmas. If you don't think it's okay to celebrate Christmas, then that's okay. That's okay. That's between you, your consciousness, and whatever God, that if God did tells you, uh, the Holy Spirit comes and convicts you of celebrating Christmas, that's between you and the Holy Spirit, okay? I'm talking about me, and as for me and my house, what we do, how we serve the Lord. Because you, I can show you how you can look at it and say the devil's in this and the devil's in that. Fine. But no matter what the devil is doing, what they meant for evil, God is using it for good. Because this time of the year, people are talking about Jesus. This time of the year, people are talking about the birth of Jesus. Even if you look across somebody's lawn and you see that they may have the uh, uh, a manger set up, they're talking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. But I want to talk to you about the gift from God. With a little bit of time I got left now. Listen, Matthew 7-11 uh, 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 tells us this. It says, if you you 
than being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father who is in heaven give what is good to those who ask him God is willing to give us a good gift my brothers and sisters Jesus wants us to know that God knows how to give good gifts better than you and I this is the gift giving season and everyone's presenting a gift to somebody here's a gift there's a gift everywhere's a gift but God is the one who knows how to present a gift God is the one who's given us the first gift amen listen I just want to let you know something we are God's children you and I I'm believing that you are but let me ask you something even if you're a parent or if you're not a parent have you ever rewarded someone? Have you ever, uh, how can I say it like this? Have you ever rewarded someone with a gift for their bad behavior? No parent will give a child a gift. I'm going, you know what? You, you, got, uh, you were just a tyrant in the household. I think I'm going to take you out and buy you some ice cream. No parent is going to buy their child or reward their child for bad behavior. No parent is going to do it. You're not even going to go and buy your friend. You and your friend fell out and had a bad argument. You're not going to say, let me, let's go out and, and, and let me buy you a, a nice gift because you raised hell against me. No, you're not. No, you're not. What are you saying, overseer? I'm saying this. Nobody rewards their child for bad behavior, but God does. God rewards us when we did not know him when we were uh, yet still sinners God rewarded us by giving us a gift and you may say well I, I don't understand let me let me back it up a little bit you got to remember before we even came let's just talk about the Israelites amen the original Israelites when Israel committed spiritual adultery when they backslid and they began idol worshiping as Jeremiah. God had to tell Jeremiah when they uh, uh, left the love of God and they went after the love of the world. When in spite of their bad behavior, God presented them with a gift. And you may say, shame on Israel. How could they uh, uh, do that to God? After all God wanted to do was present them to a gift. After all God wanted to do was uh, make a, a people who were no people into a people for himself. How could they do that? Shame on them. Shame, shame, shame. Listen, it's not just Israel, but it's the entire world that God, the world that God created, he presented a gift to this world. He presented a gift. That's why we started off with John 3, 16. It lets us know that what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him, in Jesus, should or will not perish but have eternal life. God didn't want this world to perish. So he gave us a gift. Though we were wayward, though we were uh, evil, Though we were backslidden, though we were uh, adulterous, though we practiced idolatry, God said that he loved the world. This world is a mean place. This world is a hateful place. This is not the world that God created. This world became so mean, so hateful. But yet and still, God so loved the world that he gave. He gave his only son, Jesus. You and I couldn't present God with a gift. We didn't know how to give God a gift. We, we rendered unto God for all that he's done for us but God saw in spite of how wicked the world was God said I'm going to present the world a gift and the Bible lets us know that God so loved the world that he gave this world didn't deserve a gift this world deserved condemnation this world deserved destruction this world deserves the hell wrath but God so loved the world that he presented a gift to the world the world has never received or never seen, never known a gift that God presented to this world in the form of Jesus, his only son. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, I know the scriptures tell us because somebody's sitting here thinking right now, well, you know, Jesus didn't come for us. He just came to the Jews first. He came to the Jews. That's what the scriptures tell us, overseer. He didn't come for the world. He came for them. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me help you out. The scriptures, I know what the scripture says, but it also tells us that Jesus came unto his own and they refused him. But the Gentiles, you and I, were always a part of God's uh, created plan for salvation. We were part of the gift 
that God was going to present to the world. That's why the Apostle Paul lets us know, he says that if they had known, they would have never crucified. If they had known what? If they would have known that Jesus was a gift for the world, they would have never crucified the Lord and Savior. He wasn't just a gift for the Gentiles, but, I mean, uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the Hebrews, but he was a gift for the world. He was a gift for the world. God made Jesus this gift available to the whole world. But because those people rejected him, God's plan of salvation was not going to be thwarted. He was still had us in mind that we were going to be part of the gift, the gift from God. Amen. What are you saying, overseer? I'm saying this, that on the night when Jesus was born, God sent messengers in the form of uh, angels and he sent the messengers to the lowly shepherds the shepherds weren't considered they were out in the fields they were considered lowly the least of the people God didn't send messengers into the King Herod's palace and says all oh, arise and know that I've, but I've given a gift to the world no God sent his messengers as angels into the fields where the lowly shepherds were so that the uh, shepherds would know that they were included to receive in their portion of the gift that God was given to the world. God gave a gift to the world and he did not want the lowly shepherds. When I'm saying lowly, I'm talking about the dejected of life. When I'm talking lowly, the scriptures wants us to know that those who are hanging out on skid row, that those who have been dejected, that those who are not, uh, uh, believe that they can't be uh, included in the number unto the king's palace. You know there are some people who have a Pharisee mentality that thinks that only ones that are going to receive salvation is them and those in their uh, a certain sect. But God wanted to let us know that I'm going to send this word to the lowly shepherds. I'm going to send this word to those who are laying on skid row, to those who are in the gutter, to those who are in prison, to those who are yoked up to sin. God wanted us to know that I'm sending this message to you. I'm sending it. How did he say? Listen, in Luke chapter 2 verses uh, 10 through 12, it reads this. And so when the angels came out to the shepherds, and so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people, hallelujah, not just for the Hebrews, but for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes lying in the manger. Hallelujah, glory to God. Listen, the Bible makes it plain to us for today. What day? The day you received salvation. The day the scales fell from your eyes. The day that you knew that Jesus was born. And not only did you know that he was born, but you began to receive him. And God wanted them to know that, listen, there was been born for you a Savior who is Christ. He's Christ the Lord. Listen, you know, God lets us know this in his word. He says, that I know what you have need of before you can ask me. God knew that you and I were going to need a savior before you were born, before you can ask him. God said, I'm going to send a savior. His name is going to be Christ the Lord. And this is how you're going to find him. He's not in a manger today. How do you find him? Because Overseer Armstrong's been telling you about him all year long. How do you find him? Because when you open up the book and you start reading about the Bible, how do you find him? Because someone's going to uh, 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 give you an opportunity to share with you the good news of the gospel. And when you're able to believe that. When you can believe the gospel, believe it in your heart, and confess it out of your mouth, you found Jesus. Listen, you know, we always say that. When I found the Lord, when I found the Lord, I was drunk. When I found the Lord, I was in prison. When I found the Lord, I was strung on harem. When I found the Lord, I was a prostitute on Main Street. When I found the Lord, I was uh, at the end of my rope. I was ready to jump off a bridge. When I found the Lord, I, I was shooting heroin in my veins. When I found the Lord, I was in the strip club. When you found the Lord, let me let you know something. You didn't find the Lord because the Lord wasn't lost. You're the lost one. You, the scales have fell and you realize that no matter where you were, Jesus was there with you. You didn't find him in the crack house. You didn't find him in cocaine alley. You took him to cocaine alley. Jesus doesn't wait for you to uh, uh, come out of these places before he can present himself to you. No, you took him with you. 
People always want to think that Jesus is always hanging around saved folk. The devil is a liar. Jesus is hanging around the unsaved. The scriptures let us know. They said he was a wine bibber. They said he hung out with tax collectors. They said he hung out with the lowly shepherds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's hanging out with them. Why? To give them an opportunity so that they too may get to know him. Not after they got it all cleaned up, but while they were in the midst of their sin, while they were knee deep in it, while they were up to their nose in it, some had it up to here. Some are just over over their head and Jesus can still reach out and pull you up out of the muck and mire that you're in. He's not coming from a distance. He's right there with you. He is right there with you. So when we talk about Christmas and we talk about the gift, we want to let you know that God presented the gift of a savior wrapped in the body of an infant. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The greatest gift. Hallelujah. That this world has ever known or ever seen is Jesus Christ, the Lord. He is the Lord. And guess what? That's the best gift given that you can give. You give somebody Jesus if they don't know him. Because he is the gift that keeps on giving. He's the ideal gift giving. If you're going to give somebody a gift, give them Jesus. Give them Jesus. Amen. Listen, a lot of people won't receive a gift at all. But they can receive Jesus. Some people, you'll give them a gift and that's not what they want, but they can receive Jesus. You may even want to present Jesus, but they won't receive him. But you have an opportunity now because they're the ones talking about Jesus. They're the ones who's opening the doorway for you, talking about the birth of Jesus. They're the ones telling you that when they see a, neat, a, 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 a nativity scene in someone's front lawn, they always see the wise men. They always see the, uh, uh, a Mary and a Joseph, and they see a little baby Jesus laying in a trough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they, that's what it is. And you can go right now and ask them, what do you want for Christmas? Or oh, let them ask you, what do you want for Christmas? And then you can say, what do, what do you know about Christmas? And let them open the door. Let them open the door. So now you can begin to dialogue or, or let them know that you can share the gospel. What do you know about Christmas? The door has been opened and our opening scripture lets us know that God so loved the world that he gave. He gave the world the first gift, the first present that they ever received. God so loved the world that he gave the world a savior, his son Jesus. And listen, I know right now that the entire uh, gift given experience has been uh, secularized and we're easily destroyed distracted by uh, materialism because the people want you to uh, go to retail centers, want you to come and buy this and come and spend that. This is the busiest time of the year. But I think that every Christmas, God should be recognized as the greatest gift giver. God should. Every Christmas should point you to acknowledging that God is the one who gave the gift. He gave the first gift. He's the best gift giver. God should be recognized as such. It's through God or, or, or God through Jesus Christ gives us the gift that keeps on giving. What's the gift? Listen, Romans 6.23 lets us know this. The whole world, that the wages of sin is death. But the gracious gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Listen. I don't know if you want to receive a gift or not. Sometimes you want to wait till your package, you get your package and you want to open it up. I've already opened the gift for you. You don't have to shake it. You don't have to scratch it and sniff it and try to figure out what's in it. I'm telling you what's in it. I unwrapped them and God lets us know too. Jesus is not laying uh, in swallowing cloth. He's made available to you. The, the, the cloth has come off the gift. Will you receive him? Will you receive this gift called Jesus Christ? Will you receive him into your life? And if you're able to say, yes, I know I'm a sinner and I can only be saved through the grace of Jesus Christ. And you can acknowledge that God so loved this sinful world. Maybe not yourself, but if you don't want to put yourself in it, say he saved the whole sinful world by allowing, sending Jesus into the world that he may die a sinner's death so that you can receive salvation. If you're able to say that in your heart and confess it out of your mouth, then you've just received salvation. Amen. And we thank God for you. We thank God that you're able to receive this gift of eternal life. Because that's what the word lets us know. I just read it to you. Listen. Uh, 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 the, but the gracious gift of God is eternal life 
That's the gift that God gave. God gave us eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I'm glad that you received them here today. Amen. Listen, we thank you for coming to cel uh, uh, serve, celebrate here today with us. We thank you for just uh, riding along with us all year long, just coming in and fellowshipping. We thank God for you. You know, I, I know that it's, it's not easy. Sometimes you got things to do. Sometimes you catch the replay. I thank God for you because these messages are made available for you. And share these messages. Somebody may be a little wayward and still hear this right now and say, Overseer, you just jazzed up the Christmas. I've never heard it such a way. I still think it's a pagan holiday. Well, that's great. That's between you and your thoughts and you and God. If God and the Holy Spirit convicts you of such and such, then do so. But as for me and my house, I, explain, I just explained to you why. And as Joseph told his brothers what you meant for evil, God use it for good because no matter how you look at it the whole world is talking about the birth of the Messiah that day or any day is a day to celebrate Jesus amen amen all right listen I thank you for coming to fellowship with us here I just want to pray us out and I just want to continue to believe God that the best in Christ Jesus is still in front of you it doesn't matter if this year is halfway over almost over in a few days but the best in Christ Jesus is still in in front of you. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your divine presence which is in our midst. Father, we just thank you right now for this a uh, uh, gift given season. Father, we thank you for this joyous season. Father, we thank you for this holiday season. Father, we thank you for this Advent season. We thank you for the second coming season. Father, we just thank you for knowing that whatever the devil meant for evil, you're going to use it for good. Father, we just thank you for knowing that during this time of the year, people are talking about the birth of the Messiah. Father, we just thank you for Jesus. We thank you for him walking the earth that he created. Father, we thank you that he uh, sacrificed his life, that we may be able to uh, receive salvation based on what Jesus has done. Father, we thank you in knowing that we don't have to work for salvation, Lord. All we have to do is believe and receive in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you found it not a robbery to present Jesus as the gift giver of the world. Father, you so loved this mean, hateful, nasty world that you gave, Lord. You gave Jesus. And we thank you now because he's the gift that keeps on giving. We thank you that when we receive Jesus, Lord, we receive another gifting called the Holy Spirit. And Father, we thank you because when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive giftings, Lord, through the Spirit of God. And we thank you now, Father, for the giftings of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that you haven't forsaken us and you haven't forgotten us. We thank you that you carried us this far throughout the year, Lord. We thank you in knowing that we have a Savior in Jesus Christ, who is our Lord. And Father, I pray right now that you will continue to meet the need of these, your children. I pray, Father, that they will healing will be manifested in their bodies. Father, I pray right now that someone will receive their a much needed financial breakthrough, Lord, not even before the year is over, but let it be manifested this day in the name of Jesus. Father, you have come that they may have and that they may have eternal life. And I thank you right now for knowing that you have already been here. And we bless your name. We lift your name on high. We give you praise we give you honor and we glorify you in christ jesus name amen amen and amen again amen again listen may god continue to bless you may he continue to cover you may he continue to keep you may he continue to strengthen you may he continue to meet your need according to his riches and glory through christ jesus you don't lack a thing you have all that you have need of. For God said he knew what you have need of before you can ask him. And he met your need. All that you have need of is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So God presented the gift. Will you receive it? And if you receive it, then your need has been met. Amen. Amen. Till the next time we see each other again, don't forget to make time for God because God has already made time for you. May God bless you richly. If you are being blessed by the words from Manna from Heaven Ministries and would like to give a donation or a contribution, please go to the link below. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.